Over the course of the pandemic, our healthcare workers have shown extraordinary bravery by putting their lives at risk to help others. And today we're sharing a story which is particularly personal to us here at This Morning. In May, emergency care practitioner and paramedic Peter Hart tragically passed away on his 52nd birthday after a month-long battle with coronavirus. Well, as a husband and father of three, Peter has left a huge hole in the lives of his family, including his daughter and our colleague, Lauren. Well, Lauren has worked as a production secretary on uh, This Morning team since October. She first joined ITV in 2019, very bravely joining us today. Um, and, uh, and we have such a tight family here. Um, uh, it's heartbreaking to see one of our one of our team go through this, and this is, a, this is a tough story. What made you want to tell it out loud? I think it's been um, a really difficult year for everybody, and um, especially over the last few months, for my family especially, and I'm sure for many other families, um, it's really hit home a lot more due to just the second wave of the virus. And um, I felt that I wanted to honour my dad, um, by coming on and supporting mm. his colleagues and the rest of the NHS staff and the families that are also currently experiencing what we went through um, in May last year. Um, so I felt like it was important to get the message across today. And so just tell us what your dad did and what type of man was he? What was he like as a dad? He was just the most incredible man. Um, I feel so blessed to have had the time that I did with him. Um, he absolutely loved his job and the staff at the hospital. Um, he, you know, he spent even his days off going back into the hospital mm. to spend more time with patients um, and take our pets' as therapy dog in Nala um, just to bring more happiness to people, mm. um, which I think really reflects the kind of man that he was. Yeah, absolutely. So he, um, he was a picture of health uh, and, uh, and then he woke up one day feeling like, in his words, a truck had hit him. Yeah, so um, it was obviously in March last year, we'd all sort of adjusted to the lockdown. Um, and I think like many families, I never expected for it to affect us in the way it did. Um, he was, you know, happy and healthy and there was absolutely nothing wrong with him at all. Um, and then all of a sudden one day he woke up and just couldn't move out of bed. You know, my dad never took a day off sick in his life, so for us to hear how ill he was was, you know, really difficult at the time. He um, spent a week at home. And we were looking after him, um, just hoping that ev with every day that he might improve. And we got to the day before Easter Sunday and he was just so poorly and really struggling to breathe at that time. So... Um, and this again speaks to who my dad was, but he didn't want to make a fuss or call an ambulance or, you know, he just didn't said... Didn't want to use the facilities? No. And he, I mean, as, as a healthcare professional, you know how, you know, stressful it is yeah. at the least. So we, um, we just decided to take him in um, and give him some extra support because at the time we didn't think that it would be as serious as it became. Yeah. So I drove my dad in... Um, which was a really surreal experience for me because, you know, my dad's normally the one looking after me, so yeah. to be... It, the roles reversed was really tricky. Um, and he, ha you know, had, he had a wheelchair and I took him into the department. And I didn't even think at the time to give him a hug because he was so poorly and his temperature was so high and he just said to me, don't worry, Lauren, I'll, I'll be OK, I'll, I'll be home, home him soon, I'll be on the ward for a few days and I'll... I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back home. So um, it ended up that two days later, after he spent it on a ward, we got a phone call from um, an ICU consultant saying that he was just so poorly that they needed to give him some extra support. So they had to sedate him and put him on a ventilator. And so was that, I mean, for you at home, kind of thinking, here's your dad saying to you, don't worry, it'll only be a couple of days, I'll be back soon, to realise how quickly this has progressed. And that's the thing about this horrible virus, is that it is so unpredictable and it can turn at any moment. To hear those words, ease on a ventilator, must have been really tough. It was so difficult and um, I have a 10-year-old um, sister, so at the time she was only nine. Um, and as a family, having to explain that to her, um, that her daddy wasn't going to be able to communicate with us anymore at that time and that we just had to remain positive for him and strong for him and hope that 
over the next few weeks that his body would start to respond to the treatment they were giving him. Mm -hmm. um, so at the time, she, you know, she's just a ray of sunshine. So she wanted to do everything she could to get her daddy better. So um, she wrote a lovely um, card for him, um, which we gave to the hospital to put at the end of my dad's bed because she wanted it to be the first thing that he would see when he woke up was yeah. her drawing for him. Um, and but, a teddy. Yeah, and she teddy. put a little teddy there as well for him. Because obviously, as, as families know at home, you know, we're not able to go in and see yeah. um, my dad or other people aren't able to see their loved ones. So the only form of contact we would have is just a phone call a day, yeah. which could be at any time, because obviously they're so... You know, the staff are working so... Well, you end up hard. so terrified that you're going to miss a call and, and then... Mm. And everyone if, uh, who's had this visit their family or their friends, you wait for the moment where you turn the corner, it's OK, mm. I'm going to be all right, or then you get the call and, and they're saying that he's gone into cardiac arrest, his organs have begun to shut yeah. down, um, he's now on life support and you have to come in and say goodbye because the machine's being turned off. Yeah, um, so obviously, you know, my mum's the most positive woman and she's so strong and she kept us strong that entire time because, as you say, it was such a roller coaster for us and I'm sure many families are experiencing the same thing, where one day you might get a call saying everything's fine and he's stable and then the next my mum would have to go in because they said that, you know, he was at end of life and there was nothing more they could do. Um, and we got to a point where his health was just getting worse. Um, he went into cardiac arrest on the third week that he was in hospital and they explained to us that obviously that he had multiple organs that were compromised and they said that, you know, they were dealing with, you know, treading on eggshells basically to try and keep him going. Um, and then... They had my phone, obviously, the whole time as a point of contact. So for me to have, you know, that worry and fear that I might miss a call yeah. was really difficult. Um, but the day before my dad's 52nd birthday, um, we went to bed that night and were just hoping that we wouldn't receive a call mm. um, and that things would be OK. We might be able to drop off a card or something for him. And then... Um, the morning, about seven o'clock, we got a phone call from one of the nurses saying that my dad um, wasn't doing very well at all and they were really sorry, but there was nothing more that they'd be able to do oh, for him, which was really hard to... I think, you know, your body goes into shock at that yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so for my family, you know, we'd stayed so strong up until that point, it was it was really hard to know that that was going to be the last time that we saw my dad. Oh, OK, well, you it, did so it, well. Uh, are you OK? Yeah. It was OK, you did. Catastrophic for the family. Yeah. Catastrophic for your little sister. And also the other side of these things is that um, the staff knew him as well. I mean, everyone is treated equally in hospital, obviously, by of the course, amazing yeah. staff. Um, but difficult for them because they know him, but also because on the bed was the teddy and the picture, yeah. which is a constant reminder to all of those people who are looking after us that for every person in that bed, there is a family, there's a story. Yeah. They are a, a mum or a nan or a dad or a granddad or a brother or a sister. There is a family waiting for them to come home. Oh, completely. Um, I think just from the experience my family went through, just the level of admiration I have for what they do on a daily basis. I mean, it's one thing for what my family experienced, but for them having to make phone calls like they did for my family, to be giving the most incredible medical care, but at the same time having to offer the level of emotional support for families at home, um, I just have, there's no words to express really the admiration that my family have, and I'm sure I speak for other families across the country as well. They're just, amazing individuals. How, um, how are you coping as a family? Because obviously this pandemic is still raging, the numbers of deaths are still going up. Your brother is still on the front line because he's a doctor himself, so he's still going into work every day. How are you doing? 
I mean, we're, we're, we're taking each day and um, my dad would be so proud of how my brother's doing at the moment. Um, He'd be very proud of he's you right just, now. He's um, just doing an incredible job. And um, I think from a young age, both my parents have instilled that resilience in all of us. And I know that my dad wouldn't want me to continue with the rest of my life sort of wallowing in that pain that we feel. He mm -hmm. wanted us to turn it into something positive. Well, this is why you're here, because um, you said to us downstairs and, um, and at the beginning of this, you said you want, to, want him to be proud of you, which he will be. Of course, he would be, you know, regardless, proud of you, proud of your sister, proud of the family. Um, but you want to use this moment to potentially save a life. And you know, because you're on our production team, the impact that people sitting uh, on that sofa has when mm. they open up and tell something about themselves, a story. We've saved countless lives mm. in this show and that's what you want to do because you want to say to the deniers, mm. to the rule breakers, um, this is something mm. that can touch you if you don't think it will. Yeah, I think, you know, it's so easy to be at home at the moment and watch the TV and just look at statistics and you feel so detached from what's actually going on for families like mine and for the staff that are currently working those hours. And I would just want to say to people today that it can affect anybody of any age. And, you know, you, 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 my dad was in full health, you know, so positive, such an incredible individual. And my way of honouring him is to come on today and just tell people that, just to think of the staff that are currently in ICU right now, doing their best to protect families. And if me talking about this just saves one person today or someone at home just needs that reminder of why they're keeping on pushing on through yeah. this lockdown, then I feel like I, I would do my dad proud by You've by definitely being. done that. Yeah. Um, thank you. I know that can't have been easy for you and you are an incredibly strong girl because I, there's no way I could have done that. You're amazing. Thank well you. So love much. to the family. Yeah. Thank lots you so much. Thank you.